It's Bleak of Another Girl. Today we are reacting to weird facts about the male body you didn't know. And obviously I'm a male. So of course I'm gonna watch it and it's off because I don't wanna know some weird shit, you know what I'm saying? So let's get into the video. You're born with it and it'll stay with you for the rest of your life. You look at it every day and you never get bored of it. It gives you intense pain and gives you immense pleasure. Sometimes when you look in the mirror, you're reminded that it doesn't last forever. You go on Instagram and you compare it with other ones. Sometimes hoping you can change it, obscure it, give it a bit of a makeover. But whatever your body looks like, it's a marvel of engineering. It's actually almost difficult to comprehend. In the words of Shakespeare, the human body is unlimited in thinking, admirable in his shape and movement, angelic in action, godlike. Today, you're going to see just how your body is infinitely amazing. You might have heard that women are stronger than men when it comes to surviving disease and also in many other ways. But when it comes to brute force, men on average win hands down. But do you know why that is? It's said that on average, men's upper bodies have much more muscle mass than the average woman, as much as 75% more. Men have stronger lower body strength too. They grip harder, they throw harder, they punch harder, and they run faster. And we'll say this one last time, on average. We've all just accepted this as a fact of life. But what we don't ask is why? Why shouldn't women have evolved to be just as strong or stronger than men? Well, scientists say men evolved to fight. Men are designed for combat. In some of the natural world, females are very often bigger than males, but that's because they're designed to carry lots of eggs. It's different for land-dwelling vertebrates, which includes humans. Those males evolved to be bigger due to competition with other males regarding finding a female to procreate with. All this fighting over females in the past has led to men being more violent overall. Men are responsible for something like 80% of violent crimes, while the prison population, at least in the US, is made up of 93.2% of men as of April 2021. Are men just naturally violent? It's like this, according to one scientist. Men are not more violent because they're stronger, but stronger because they've needed to be more violent over evolutionary history, which has shaped male psychology in all sorts of ways. So never mind how puny you are, you've been designed to be a fighting machine. But what about the brain? Do men have a different kind of brain? Okay, so we're walking on thin ice even bringing that up. We don't want to offend anyone, so we'll remind you not to shoot the messenger. If you're a scientist and you say that men and women's brains are fundamentally different, you might be accused of neurosexism. But quite a few studies have shown that men's brains work better at completing spatial and motor tasks. They might look at a puzzle and have to think about how a shape can be manipulated to fit it in the right hole. And according to those studies, men will on average be better than women at this. Still, other scientists have called this a myth and indeed a kind of neurosexism. So the jury is still out on that one. One thing we do know for sure is men's brains are bigger, but that doesn't have any effect on intelligence. Men might have bigger parts of the brain for a reason, but again, this is still a controversial issue. Some studies have found that the parts of the men's brains are bigger which are associated with the survival instinct and reacting to stimuli. Women might have bigger parts of the brain that are related to language and emotion. Okay, so now we think we should get down to business and talk about that taboo subject of the male phallus. The penis, as your doctor will refer to it. It's a pretty amazing thing to behold, even if it sometimes gets in the way of having a quiet life. First of all, it's a hard worker. It even does the night shift. Did you know that the average man will get three to five erections during the night, often lasting as long as 30 minutes? What's up with that? My head cut. My head on. It's not as if you need it in your sleep. The medical term for this phenomenon is nocturnal penile tumescence, something we imagine you'd never say to your partner after she asks what that pressure is on her leg. Don't worry, darling, it's just nocturnal penile tumescence. Basically, you get wood when your parasympathetic nervous system is stimulated. Sights, touch, memories, even sounds make this happen. Arteries in your pecker dilate, blood flows in, and hey, presto, you got lift off. The penis is not a muscle, by the way. It's been described as more like a sponge that gets bigger when it fills with blood. When you're sleeping, much of your body might slow down, but the parasympathetic nervous system is still switched on. You aren't getting a stiffy because of dreams and because of that leg of your, a stiffy. Of your lover. It's just the fact that your nervous system is functioning well. Why it happens other than that is still a mystery to science. One scientist said nighttime erections serve no purpose whatsoever and are merely a byproduct of the nervous system. So don't worry about it if every time you wake up you feel like you have a Toblerone stuffed into your underwear. Okay, so now to the question you all want answered. Is there such thing as a grower and a shower? Do some men walk around with great big dongs while others walk around with a lip balm in their pants? Well, just remember that a lip balm can almost double in size with a bit of rubbing. 
There are such things as growers, and studies have proven it. If you have a lip balm kind of John Thomas, it's very likely you'll grow a lot more than the. Pause that, bro. I know you. I, I know you just saw the illustration just now, bro. Pause, bro. Pause. The guy with the flaccid Toblerone. One study showed that out of 2,770 men with small flaccid willies, their growth was 86% when fully erect. Meanwhile, the bigger boys only showed a growth of 47%. Basically, things even out when men get down to business. As the saying goes, don't judge a book by its cover. Scientists say you cannot assess the size of a man's wiener until you see it in all its glory. Some studies have shown that about 80% of men are growers and the rest are showers. Sticking with subjects that make people blush, you might not know that men have a G-spot. Yep, just tunnel about two inches into the rectum and you'll find it there. It's at a place called the perineum between the scrotum and the anus and with a bit of pressure, not too much, it can be activated. It might also be stimulated when you're taking a poo, giving you the feeling of pooforia. There are cases of men having what's been called defecation-induced orgasms. Dropping the kids off at the pool can be ecstatic, but usually they'll have to be at least one very big kid. You also might not know that men can produce milk and so can breastfeed. Yeah, that's true. Although the man might have to take some hormonal drugs. In 2002, there was a guy in Sri Lanka who fed his two babies because his wife was dying. He stepped in and saved the day. It usually doesn't happen without any drugs. Although certain things can happen in the male body that makes it produce more of the hormone prolactin. One of those things is starvation. When women are pregnant, the levels of prolactin in your body increases, but sometimes it does in men too. Although that's an anomaly, not an evolutionary requirement in nature. Due to hormones, men tend to stink a lot more than women. On the other hand, women are better at picking up the scents. According to science, the smell of a man gives women a better idea of who they might be mating with. It's said women find men with high testosterone more attractive and they can sense this with their olfactory sense. Research has shown that single men tend to have higher testosterone levels than men with partners, which makes sense in evolutionary terms. Okay, on to something new, something that might it might stop men and women arguing about turning up or down the heating in the house. Did you know that men generally feel a little bit warmer than women? You probably do know that, because there's no doubt you've been in a situation where she's cold and you're not. There's a simple reason for this other than what you're wearing. Men generally have more muscle mass and because of that they burn more calories to fuel those muscles. This creates heat, and when heat evaporates it warms the skin. As one doctor puts it, men have their own little heaters. Studies shown that women tend to feel the most comfortable in a room that's slightly hotter than a room men feel the most comfortable in. So don't argue, just accept you're different in this respect. And when it comes to skin, men's skin is anywhere from 20 to 30% thicker than the skin of a woman. Men also tend to have firmer skin, which becomes more apparent in older age. This is why women usually get wrinkles before men, and so men often look younger than women as they age. <laughs> Way more, but I'm still like that even when I get off with your bitch not boy. Her wrinkle face ass. Sorry, women. As one scientist put it, female skin thinning occurs at a significant pace after menopause. Hence, signs of skin aging in older women are generally more pronounced as compared to men in the same age group. Still, there are many factors such as work, stress, and how many days you've been under the sun trying to get a tan or grow some rice. Talking about later in life, men can actually get something that's not unlike PMS. It's called irritable male syndrome. And it usually happens when a man ages and his testosterone levels drop. It might happen at any time in life since testosterone levels do change in men for various reasons. They might suddenly drop and then they might increase, even within one day. When this happens, men might experience fatigue, depression, low self-esteem, anger, anxiety, and moodiness. When it does happen in older age and the levels seem to drop for good, that's called male menopause. Still, with some men, they have a gift that keeps on giving. They can have children at a very late age, even if they might not be the bull on the springs they used to be. In 2010, a guy in India named Mr. Ramajith Raghav had cause to celebrate. He had a child. The strange thing is, he was 94. And get this, he had another child two years later. The he was getting cheeks at 94. That's gonna be me tight. Let me know if y'all get cheese of that type of age, bro. That's me, bro, bro. It's actually not uncommon for men to have kids when they're still in their winter years. The age-defying Rubber Legs lead singer of the Rolling Stones, Mick Jagger, had his eighth kid when he was 73. A man might have less chance of having a kid at an older age, but he can still produce testosterone and sperm cells even though he might be walking around with a Zimmer frame. Still, as he approaches those winter years, there will be some changes. He might not produce as much sperm as he did before, and those sperm might not be as good at swimming as they used to be. 
It's usually in the 40s that the quality of sperm takes a hit. Older men might also produce sperm that can lead to abnormalities in the child. No man likes losing his hair, but it's a fact of life that many do. Word on the street is bald men tend to be more sexual due to what some people have said is the increase in testosterone. But is this a myth or is it true? Firstly, don't worry baldies, when it comes to attraction, studies have shown that there are many more things women think about than the mass of hair on a man's head. Some studies have even shown that bald men are seen as more masculine and attractive to women, but that's debatable. Jason Statham's bald head isn't exactly comparable to a man who has a very unsuccessful comb over. Studies have shown that women tend to be attracted to guys that have shaved all their hair off rather than guys that let hanging curtains decorate their head. As for baldness being related to virility, it's a complex matter. Castrated men who have hardly any testosterone can still have hair, while guys with hardly any hair might have low testosterone levels. Genes are what make their hair fall out, not testosterone. In conclusion, if you're bald, it's your mom and pop's fault, not the fact that you're a super sexual being. What about the Adam's apple? Why do men tend to get bigger ones? The part of the body is made of cartilage and it gets bigger when you hit puberty. Men usually have a larger larynx, an Adam's apple, and that's why they usually have deeper voices. But with both men and women, how large those things grow is down to hormones. Hence, some voices are deeper than others in both men and women. As for why men tend to grow bigger voice boxes in Adam's apples, some scientists say they developed this deeper voice to attract the opposite sex and give off more threatening sound to male rivals. Now you need to watch Are You the Alpha Male of Your Group? or have a look at Scientifically Proven Best Ways to Kiss. Did y'all know that? Let me know in the comment because I just thought I'm a grower and a shower that I'm both. That was my reaction to a weird fact about the body you didn't know. I am dumb, so I didn't know none of that. Blue Yeah, because I ain't know none of that, bro. I'm gonna be a fuck. I didn't even know. But let me know. What y'all thought about this video in the comments, like, comment, subscribe, share the video to your um, uncle and your lizard in um, Africa. Um, I love y'all. Like, comment, subscribe, like I said. Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe for more. Do not miss out. Chase your dreams, can I gonna chase your dreams for you? And just know, till next time. We out.